All right, so we're back with Halo episode four, and I think I've passed all the stages of grief for this show, so I'm not even angry anymore. It's just really boring. Nothing is happening, and it's really weird because the show jumps all over the place with multiple stories, but nothing actually seems to make any progress, except for maybe Quan's story, and then everything else is very stagnant. And I think that's why the show cuts so much, because if you actually watch it, it cuts like every two minutes to a different scene or a different plot line. So it's really all over the place to watch. But then when you think about it, you're like, oh, well, nothing really happened this episode. And you don't really care about any of the characters. I mean, the ones that you would have cared about from the games and books, they've destroyed or changed so much that they don't even reflect those characters. John just kind of stares blankly the entire episode again. And his whole story at this point is just flashbacks to him being a kid. And they're not even full flashbacks because he doesn't remember until this episode. Halsey, they made completely evil instead of like a morally gray, interesting character. And it feels like they have so much stuff that they want to do that they're not doing anything. So like this episode, we didn't see Maki, who I guess is the main antagonist of the season at all. This time, I'm just going to do the three plot lines separately and not jump back and forth between the scenes so much because of how annoying it is. So I'm going to start with John's story. So we start the episode with a flashback of John as a kid in Spartan boot camp. And we cut and Halsey says that he tried to run away again. And then we go to the present and Cortana says that John's anxious about going home. And he's never felt that before. And then John just spends the entire episode walking around his house, digging up shit from the past and doing nothing. And the digging up shit from the past is super metaphorical and super deep. You might not have fucking gotten it. This is literally all he does this episode. So him, Halsey, and her assistant and Cortana are all at Eridanus. And also, I guess they just gave up on trying to make John look tall. Because they show a couple side-by-sides of him with Halsey and her assistant and at the same height or very close. No clue why they did that. They didn't even fucking try. So John digs a bunch of holes. He ends up finding the core that his dad made him dig up. I thought that his dad made him bury his dog, but his dad made him bury a bunch of drawings of the artifact, which I thought was really weird. Because like, why wouldn't you just throw them in the trash or burn them or whatever with all the technology you have? But whatever, his dad made him bury the drawings in a in a cooler. So Cortana recreates John's house in his HUD or his heads up display. And he actually has to help have his helmet on for a bit, which I'm sure made the actor pretty sad. And Cortana uses this to not show him some stuff around the house to try to manipulate his memories. And then, you know, we get some flashbacks again of his family and they all look happy and like a normal family. And he sees Halsey with him in his house as a kid. And he's pretty pissed off about it because he's like, why are you in my house? But he doesn't really do anything. He just kind of sulks the whole time. So he remembers where the second artifact is and they go to it. And the episode ends with him finding it. It, That's literally it for him this entire episode. Some memories, some walking around, some pouting. Oh, Master Chief, that's so you. And that's it. And it's really a bummer because it seems like they're trying to go in the direction of making Halsey just a straight up villain. And... It's really annoying that they're simplifying her this way because it takes away everything that makes her character interesting. Because she actually does care about the Spartans. And she tries to rationalize that she did the right thing because it ended up saving humanity. Obviously, she didn't know that at the time. They were recruited to stop insurrectionists. But the fact that it worked out the way that it did, you can't deny how important it was. So it's a really interesting sort of philosophical story she has. And, you know, she has to reconcile with what she did and all this other stuff going on and how she's kind of abandoned her daughter and yeah she's definitely not a good person by any means but she's done a lot of good for humanity and that all kind of gets lost in this where they just show her as like a kidnapping child soldier breeding piece of crap so that's kind of a downer that they did this with halsey so the other plot thread or one of the other plot threads is kwan and soren so they arrive at madrigal we get some really weird scene of venture just walking around and like waving to people and I guess he's supposed to look cool or something. I'm not really sure. And for some reason he drives like an Escalator or Range Rover or some shit, even though it's 2552. Or they just drive fucking SUVs. I don't know. So Soren and Quan sneak into the market and she happens to run into a friend and it happens to be the day of her dad's memorial service. So that's all very convenient for her. At the memorial service, Quan runs into one of her dad's generals and finds out that everyone else is dead and then she starts yelling at this lady because she's like oh how much did venture pay you and she starts making a giant scene at her dad's memorial and she already saw a poster of her for the bounty on her head so she's just an idiot all the time i guess and the woman that she's pissed off at explains to her that everyone's just afraid of the covenant and venture is providing them security along with the help of the unsc which is funny because that was one of my 
criticisms in the first episode when she said that she wanted Madrigal's independence to Miranda Keys. I was like, why would she want independence when they have no military and they just saw a bunch of aliens come and murder 150 people with ease? So I guess she's just supposed to be stupid. I don't know. So security shows up to break up the memorial service and Soren beats some ass and they get away. Venture is in his hot tub naked walking around and this chick Franco shows up who I guess is an assassin and he wants her to take care of Quan quietly. And also he knows who Soren is. So I guess Soren is just like a famous pirate. I don't really know. It doesn't get explained. He just mentions Soren and says you can take care of him about the assassin. I guess we're just ignoring that Soren was a Spartan, even if he is hurt or crippled or whatever. He's still a giant human being who's been trained in the military since he was a kid. So Quan says to Soren, let's go to my aunt. She has the money. She has the family's money. Soren goes to get his ship, but it was stripped by scavengers. And he steals the guy's bike who told him that to get to the next port 200 miles away to get a ship. We cut back to Quan when she's with her aunt at her apartment and her aunt says that they're broke and they need to leave. And she said that her dad was actually fighting for some desert mystics, not a revolution and everything was a lie. And then Franco, the female hitman, shows up and kills all the security guards with a sword. A lot of fucking good they did and thank God none of them had any fucking guns because, you know, it's 500 years in the future and they're rebels on a brutal desert planet. So I guess they just don't have guns, whatever. So Franco kills Quan's aunt in front of her and Soren is nice enough to yell hey before shooting her so that she can move a little bit. He doesn't get to kill her this episode. He shoots her once and she's wounded. And you know, also again, like I said, he's a Spartan. So how he could miss multiple shots of a regular human, no clue. And she jumps out of like the fourth floor window and just jumps back and forth between the buildings and lands on her feet completely fine. And this scene is just fucking ridiculous to watch. I mean, what in the absolute fuck? It makes it even dumber that her fall doesn't slow her down at all. And you know, if you want to do this scene and make her look cool, just have her jump down and catch a window a few feet down, and then jump down and catch another window a few feet down. Then she can land on her feet, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, she's still super athletic. She's just not superhuman. So, Venture shows up behind her with a small army. And Soren and Quan ride away in the motorcycle that he stole. And by the way, he does shoot guys like in the chest while driving the motorcycle and turn around backwards. Couldn't do it to Franco though, who had her back to him when it mattered. So that's it for these two this episode. I don't know if she's a bad actress or if it's the writing or what, but her and Soren's stuff is just miserable to watch. I mean, she just bosses him around. He gives kind of a snarky answer and then she gets her way anyway. And I don't know. There's just nothing happening. I don't give a shit about her. Soren might be the most interesting character in the whole show, but it's not saying much. It's just, it's just hard to watch. So the last plot thread is Kai. We start with her cutting her pellet out like John did. Kai puts, I think it's her own blood in her hair. So her hair has red stripes, which, you know, there's a lot of striped hair and individualism in the military. Miranda brings Silver Team in to test the artifact. Kai acts really weird and Miranda comments on her hair and she gets all pissy and is like, oh, you don't care about us. And then we get a bunch of exposition about their skills and what they specialize in. Obviously, the artifact doesn't work for any of them. They have what looks like one of the flood on their table, like their autopsy tables. So I guess that storyline is just fucked because I have no idea where they got that from or how that's going to come into play if they even planned it out. And Kai grabs a needler and starts acting like a freak about how much she likes it. And they start using the covenant word for it. And Miranda's like, oh my God, why did we never think to ask you guys to translate for us before? And conveniently, the word for needler was part of the audio clip that they somehow got from the spaceship that Maki destroyed. None of this makes any fucking sense to me. And I, I just think it's completely fucking retarded on so many levels. No one thought to ask the Spartans for words that they heard. They don't have audio logs of every single mission that gets picked apart and listened to by linguists and shit everywhere. The Spartans have learned enough saying Healy to understand stuff just from fighting them. What the fuck? They don't have an AI working on this, dumb or smart, that specializes in translations. So all of this is just nonsensical and just complete contrivance. So Miranda is whining to them about Halsey spending more time with them than her. 
And then they deliberately make her uncomfortable and tell her they all got pets that they had to kill when they lost games against the other Spartans as kids. Yeah, so they're just making, they're making Halsey a total psychopath. And when we come back again to them, because, you know, we jump around so much, it's only Kai and Miranda there. And they're translating stuff by ear for some reason. Like they don't have fucking computers and shit everywhere. Whatever. And Kai and Miranda joke about her hair and it's super awkward. And Kai translates when John grabs the artifact from Sacred Ring to Halo. And then we get like a little bit of the Halo music in the background. Finally. Miranda asks Kai to keep it a secret. And Kai says that her and Miranda are sort of like sisters. And it's super awkward. I don't know if it's intentional or not. But it's like cringy and uncomfortable to watch. And that's it for this episode. I just summed the entire fucking thing up in about 10 minutes because there's not much to talk about. The show is really dragging. All the dialogue is just blatant exposition. The story jumps all over the place, I think, because I think they're so insecure in their story that if they jump back and forth between the plot lines enough, you'll think, man, a lot's really going on. But really, there's nothing going on. Miranda and Kai sat in a lab the whole episode. John walked around his house the whole episode. And then Quan found out there was no Rebels this episode. And that's it. So at this point, we're almost halfway through. We're so far from canon, you know, I can't even be mad about it. It's just like, why wouldn't we call it a spectacle? It's boring as fuck. But yeah, that's it. See ya.